I see a lot of violet in that, you know. Look at this. So this brush, I can get from this fat of a wash. And if I wanted to do this, look at this tip. Look at the tip. I can get a hair. Look at this, as thin as a hair. And some of those. And that's gonna dry probably too light, so I'm really, really, really good for it here. Do the edge. I throw in the mass and then do the edge. Um, you see that? Look at that. Just one big look at that. The, the brush goes from these are great brushes. The brush goes from this to this. You know? So that's a one, one and a half inch wide to like one thirty second of an inch. You know, I'm just gonna do it here. Let's, ooh, oh, God. let's just. Yummy. Okay. Now, oftentimes on a cool day, it's gonna end up like this just because nothing's checking up. So, and that's fine. You know, again, turn a positive, turn a negative, whatever. <laughs> I had a 50 50 chance there. Turn the negative into a positive. All right. Some of those green grays in the background. That's a little too saturated. Add a little red. I should unsaturate it. And then this yellow dead grass on the hillside there. Let's just throw that in there hard. Here, here's the positive thing about it. You have a lot of time, a lot of open time. This is still wet back here. Oh, did it pack out? Yeah. Still wet back there, so. I could take some of this stuff and Come over to there. There's some. So the, the I just turned a negative into a positive. The positive thing is that we have all this time to to paint while nothing's drying. You see, so the negative thing is that nothing's drying. The positive thing is that nothing's drying. You know. So take it and you work with it and make it make it work for you. Alright, I'm going 
gonna come in with some greens. I'm gonna make my green. That was a like a Prussian blue, and this is kind of like a raw sienna, but it's still it's the same thing as getting a regular old green and add red to it. Okay. All right, let's get that big old oak tree up there and reduce this down into patterns. Now I I put a lot of paint down there, so it started running. So I I picked it up with the brush. In other words, I use my brush as a sponge. <clears throat> so if you get a big runny mass down there and it starts running all over the place and you, you don't want, you can pick it up, pick it up. And if you need to really just get all the water out of there and pick it and just sucks it right up. <clears throat> it's groovy. I would probably start another one. Now see, this is another good thing that could be working for you, right? While this one's setting up, you're doing another one, but you're getting all warmed up. You might do three lands. This is probably tacked up enough to throw in a little bit of sky. Wow, we're getting some blue in the sky. I love dark clouds over a light sky. That's neat. It's one of my favorites. I'm gonna use it. Hardly ever get the chance to do this very much because never, we never get any clouds. California is so sunny. Can you imagine? All right, so I can come back here and just, I mean, they're much lighter than the value of this, so I, I need them to be much lighter than that. But I'm just going to let the brush do the cloud. Watch, just. I'm just dry brushing. I'm kind of a wet dry brush, if that makes any sense. I'm getting a dry brush edge where I'm getting some wet into wet as well. I don't even know, I would call it a semi dry brush. <laughs> I'll take it behind the. Uh, Mountain here. Maybe I ought to write a book. Semi dry brushing with. Uh... So I went, I took them, so I want them feeling like they're coming behind the mountain, but I had to paint over the mountain to do that, so why don't I just, I could just, uh, and it will. <laughs> I could just take that up with the brush. Okay, so it's something like that. Just take it up with a brush, see? The brush can be a sponge. And, and just take it away. Okay, now I'll leave that. And, and if I want to put any of the blue in there, I could as well. Or I could just let it completely dry and put a glaze over that, or maybe just leave it. But I love dark clouds over a, a light sky. I'm even getting these little, little hints of uh, blue. Now, I definitely went a lot lighter with this than that value. <clears throat> and I certainly could go over it, but I kind of like it. So, if I'm going to put a blue sky in there, it's got to be really, really, really light. And I just want little, little bits of blue coming through here and there. Lighter than these darker clouds. And if I were going to glaze this darker, I, I would want it to completely dry. <clears throat> so that's on a day like this, it's just, it might not even happen, you know, but um, to me, that's, that's. That's got a lot of success going for it right now because just doing a nice land can be a really big learning experience. I might come in with and hit some dark right under my trees, a little bit of dark in there. 
at the base of things. Just let the water take it. You know what you never do? I love those trees. Very calligraphic. Yeah. You're using a calligraphy brush. Perfect. It is perfect. <laughs> I can't even. I'm really not doing it. I'm just pretending. The brush is doing it. I, I, I'm the guide and the brush does the rest. I say, brush, do this. It says, yes, yes, sir. Anything else? <laughs> It really is. I, I can't. I can't get this with a sable brush. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I can't. It doesn't do that. See those wispy things at the base? Mm -hmm. Look at that. You're using the sumi pens today, as well as some watercolor. I'm gonna use it every day. I used it the other day in my class too. <laughs> I was just, I was just playing with it. Oh my god! I'm not so sure. I'm, I think I'm just gonna put my sable brushes on the shelf somewhere. I think the sable could be ruined if you use it this way. <laughs> yeah, I, I but this one won't. I do. I ruin them all the time. Uh, but this brush is much tougher. You see. It's a. Uh, I don't get any rain on here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you dry on dry, uh, wet dry. on dry. I just have a white a white background. Yeah. I can come in and glaze that background in over. Yeah. But now, so on a wet day like this, this might be a good way to work. Wet on dry. Yeah. Really. Really, no wet end of wet on this. Just think groupings. It's a very fragmented grouping on these sycamores. But they do overlap and group. And so you start from dark to, to light, like oil. Um, now I didn't even think about it. <laughs> Actually, certainly could have done uh, something lighter. And then come back with something a bit darker in the base. That might be a better way to go. So see all this area, mm -hmm. I want to use these marks just to connect things. Just for connecting. And maybe a few kind of lacy tree branches that kind of in and out, in and out of the foliage. That is, <laughs> that is amazing. Brushy things? Hacky brush. What? Hacky uh, or ha haka. Haka? Uh, the Japanese flat brush. You know, but this one is a um, normal bamboo handle, so you can twist, twist it better. better? Yeah, you can you can change. Uh, this one has just a wonderful feeling. Mm -hmm. um, this is a triple brush with a wolf hair. 
Yeah, it's a very large question. It might be, it might very well be that this is the better way to paint. By doing my, by doing my foreground first and painting around. You don't have to wait to yeah. try. <laughs> is that how you did yours? Yeah. It's like a mosaic. Right? Yeah. yeah. And you get a lot of these little whites happening around the edges, but then that, that, that could be a good thing. Depending on how you look at it. This is just the talk I had with my daughter before I came over, but she was having a bad morning. Yeah, maybe paint your foreground first. I think it might be a better way to go. It's just so damp. I never really get any opportunity to paint. Maybe bluer too. Bluer will give you a little more distance. Okay, you can do with the corners of this brush here. You can just put it like right in there. Mm -hmm. But I love all the little white around the things. Mm. It is like a mosaic. And some of it just gets lost in it, and some of it has a lot of white around it, almost like a wax resist. Wow, oh, okay, that was fun. I didn't know that would happen. <laughs> I wasn't trying to do another painting. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thought it was done. Um, okay, so. But that one, do another one. Now while that one's drying, you know, it's a day. Okay. We have table easels and, and we have a few easels, standing easels. Do you have a French easel or anything? No, I, I just mean, if I need to bring to the workshop. You can still, we'll have tables. Oh, I see. Yeah, you can see the tables too. Okay. This is nice. Mm -hmm. I've yeah. never worked on this before. Yeah, this is a mulberry paper, uh, number 2A, uh, yeah. Blue Heron Arts. Uh, it has stringy fiber in it, uh -huh. and uh, now we're working on the back side. So when you're done, you turn it over, you'll mm -hmm. see the fiber showing Ooh, through. Ooh, that'll be neat. And then you do the, the uh, foreground, maybe. Yeah. And this this paper has a, a wrinkle. Actually, you can crumble it. And really? the reason is that we stretch it afterwards yeah. with mounting. Uh, we use uh, dry mounting or uh, with silicone paper yeah. or uh, with uh, uh, wet paste, flour yeah. paste, and we will make it flat. And you can make it into a frame or so scroll. Does that, does that paste have like starch in it? Yeah, we use uh, wheat starch. Uh -huh. yeah. I, 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 yeah, you can search my channels for mounting. I have lots of demos on mounting. But, uh... No, this doesn't absorb as much, so my, I'm keeping my value. Yeah, dark. this is, uh, we call it semi-sized. Uh -huh. So it will not uh, bleed that much, but it, it absorbs. Yeah. It's like a coffee filter, so to speak. Or, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I love the texture. Yeah. If you love texture, actually the uh, pants yeah, shows I... better on this paper because this, this pants you're using is Sumier pants. It's designed for this kind of paper. It's a little opaque. Yeah. It works perfectly because uh, on watercolor it might be too opaque, but on rice paper it, it, it shows more transparent. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Your opaque colors show more transparent? Um, we oh, just yeah. like to oh. have heavier color yeah, on yeah. rice paper, otherwise it will fade more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Japanese uh, use more mineral colors these days. Yeah. They call it the Japanese painting or um, rock. Color painting, mineral color painting. Uh -huh. yeah. 
they have uh, developed a school with only opaque color on oh, this wow. kind of paper, yeah, on mulberry paper. This is the Japanese painting? Yeah, these are Japanese painting colors. Shall you try some opaque colors on them? Uh, you don't have to. <laughs> I don't have to? <laughs> <laughs> you already have the, the gouache in it, I think. Okay, I see. Let's try... <laughs> It's like a painting on fabric, on silk yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. Dark in there. That's nice. So I'll give, give you more paper on Sunday to try with your figure, right. figure painting class. I'm messing around with you. That's, mm -hmm. that's, that would work perfectly into that. Because of your multimedia class. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I'm thinking. You. So last one asking if you have table, it's perfect for, um, because we usually work on leveled uh, surface, but it's fine on an uh, easel as well. Yeah. yeah. Wow, I love it. Mm -hmm. The color will fade, but when you, after you mount it, it will come back to the wet stage. It looks like it's still wet for you know, 100 years from now. You can still feel the water, the wetness. Really? Yeah, that's the best of watercolor. Uh, I mean, rice paper because I've never worked on rice paper. Yeah, you this should. Is you rice should. Paper? Yeah, this is oh. rice paper. Oh, okay. Generally speaking, uh, we call it uh, uh, rice paper, but uh, specifically, rice paper refers to. Another kind of paper I'll, I'll show you later. It's more non-forgiving. Uh, it takes the the stroke. It will be um, like uh, how do you say? Every stroke is uh, uh, shows more. Yeah, it has a watermark. If you add another stroke, it will show. You know, you cannot uh, change it. Change it. But with this paper, it's more. Forgive me. Good morning. We got some figures in the foreground. You want to paint them? If you if you don't like the texture, you cover it with the gouache. Yeah. yeah. It, but usually the gouache goes back on the on the back side and the transparent on the front. Mm -hmm. That will give you both sides of the um, pigmentation and uh, uh, what it calls grain, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs>